Hi, in this video I'll be talking about how to position the antennas of wireless routers or access points for best performance in a two-story house. The assumption of course is that the wireless routers or access points have external omnidirectional antennas. Just remember though that there are many other important factors to consider when it comes to designing a wireless network for a multi-story building. But in this video we will be only focusing on the position of the antennas. Now in a previous video I covered the same topic but specifically for a single story house. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend doing so before we dive into this one. Because it just doesn't make sense to repeat what I have already covered. It's only about 2 minutes. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. Now I'm going to try to explain this using four different scenarios. Please note that while these scenarios cover a wide range of situations, they may not encompass every possible scenario, but hopefully they should provide enough information for you to understand what to do even if you have a slightly different setup. For simplicity, I will refer to the devices that broadcast wireless networks as access points. In reality though, they could be access points, wireless routers, repeaters, or even mesh nodes. The first scenario involves using two different access points with a wired backhaul. In my opinion, this is the best case scenario as it allows me to address each floor separately and follow the recommendations discussed in the first video. These recommendations include installing the access point in the center of each floor, elevated from the ground, and keeping the antennas in a vertical position. So in this scenario and regarding the Wi-Fi coverage for the clients, there is no need to worry about whether this access point's Wi-Fi can reach the second floor or vice versa. This is because each access point is responsible for covering its own floor. Additionally, the backhaul connection between the access points is wired, not wireless. Therefore, the wired backhaul ensures a stable and reliable connection between the nodes, eliminating any concerns about the wireless coverage between the floors. In the second scenario, we have two access points with a wireless backhaul. More specifically, a dedicated band is used for the wireless backhaul. This type of configuration is typically possible with tri-band or quad-band access points. Now, let's consider an example with two Wi-Fi 6E tri-band access points, where we want to reserve the 6 GHz band exclusively for the backhaul. Now, if we know which antenna on the access point is designated for the 6 GHz band, such as in the ASUS GTAX E11000 which I have reviewed before and we know it has 4 dedicated 6 GHz antennas and 4 combined 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz antennas, we can position the 6 GHz antennas horizontally because this positioning helps ensure that the 6 GHz band can reach the top floor and vice versa. Now the remaining antennas which combine the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands and are used for the client devices and not for the backhaul can be positioned vertically to provide coverage throughout the entire house. The next scenario involves having two access points but this time without a dedicated band for the backhaul. Let's consider two Wi-Fi 6 dual band access points, each one equipped with four dual band antennas. In this case, both bands are used for both client connections and the backhaul. To optimize the setup, I would position two of the antennas vertically for the client and the other two horizontally for the backhaul connection. In the last scenario, there is only a single access point to cover both the first and second floors. Let's assume we have a dual band Wi-Fi 6 access point with four dual band antennas. This is not an ideal situation, but if it has to be like this, I would install the access point on the floor with the highest priority for better internet connection. To optimize coverage, I would position two antennas vertically to ensure good coverage on the prioritized floor. Then I would tilt the other two antennas at approximately a 45 degree angle. This angled position helps extend coverage to the second floor. 
To fine tune the coverage, I would use a Wi Fi analyzer to check the signal strength on the second floor. Based on the analysis, I might need to make adjustments to these two antennas. While there is no guarantee of complete coverage on the second floor, by adjusting these antennas, I can ensure that areas with higher priority on the second floor are also covered. Alright, once again I want to emphasize that the first scenario that involved using a wired backhaul is overall the best solution because the rest of them in one way or another rely on using wireless backhaul. Wireless signal can get significantly degraded depending on what kind of material is used between the floors. In some cases the 6 GHz band might not even be able to effectively reach the other floor. That's why using a Wi-Fi analyzer tool, something that I've been talking about in my last couple of videos, is going to be very very useful and can help us to determine all those things. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you next time.